on the stage today, and I mean that literally. We have Daenerys, we have Cersei, we have Jon Snow, we have Tyrion, to name but a few, all very much on the edge of something disastrous happening. The mood is somber. It's, you know, world leaders uniting and disagreeing about how the world should be run. It can go south very quickly, and that's the brilliant part of that of the sequence because you know how quickly things can turn on this show. It's a potential powder keg. So no matter what's happening, no matter who's meeting who, the potential for things to completely explode is always there. The Dragon Pit is probably one of the most essential scenes, sequences in all of Game of Thrones. Tyrion and his posse, they know they're entering a dangerous place and they know they're taking a risk coming here. You have 60 plus hours at this point of main characters who you are really invested in. And it's enjoyable to put people together who haven't been together before and see how they would react to each other. It's people becoming aware of their the smallness, I think, in their nature. No matter how much they fight each other, there's a bigger threat to life than just who's on the throne. You can say to anyone, you know, this disease is coming. But until you can show them evidence, they won't get past their own smaller problems to fight the big problem. These things build over time, you know. It takes 70 hours to get to this point. It takes 70 hours for, for the story to allow this scene to happen. There's a momentum that's up now which doesn't stop. So it's, that's really exciting. It's incredible because I am the new kid on the block. And I've seen these guys for six seasons now. Then all of a sudden being part of the scene I think this is gonna be one of the scenes of this season. The Dragon Pit epitomizes the central challenge of season seven, where we have, I don't know, a dozen of our principal characters all in the same place, many of whom haven't seen each other since a very dramatic incident years before between them. So that scene was incredibly tricky to write and incredibly tricky to film. You wanna be able to service all of these characters, and that was tremendously fun to plot out conflicts between people, friendships between people, which ones you wanted to highlight and which ones that you were gonna have to let fall by the wayside. You have, you know, dozens of, it seems like dozens of little mini scenes. So we had to find great moments and character interactions and story for all of these characters. It was just so much fun to write for all these guys together. It kind of forced us to really explore what the different tonal variations were in those reunions. You know, it's trying to keep an eye on what they're all there for. I mean, they're all there for a reason, which is to discuss the possibility of an alliance and whether that's even possible with these people who have so many reasons for hating each other and so few reasons for trusting each other. Welcome, my lords. For Pod to see Tyrion, I mean, that guy was the most important person in the world to him. He was the only person who'd given him a chance. I'm glad you're alive. There's something very sweet in it. And amongst all the big stuff, the, the small stuff still happens as well, and that's what adds to the texture of the show, I think. That stuff's never forgotten about. What's in there? Fuck off. There's a really wonderful moment where Brienne spies the Hound and she realizes that she has to sort of apologize, maybe, maybe for nearly killing him, maybe. But she also brings to him the news that she knows he wants to hear, that Arya is alive and Arya's home. Oh, that was a relief. Yeah, of course, and a concern, is she all right? Who's protecting her if you're here? The only one that needs protecting is the one that gets in her way. And then it turns out that we don't need to worry about Arya, because I've taught her everything. What I love about Tyrion and Bronn's relationship is they know exactly who they are. Tyrion prods him a little bit about how much Bronn is doing things out of self-interest. Don't you worry about me. I'm doing all right. Looking after myself. Are you? Helping me to arrange this meeting wasn't exactly looking after yourself, was it? It's your head Queen Cersei's offered a bag of gold for us, not mine. Knocks on his tin heart a little bit knows there's something in there. It's good to see you again. Yeah, you too. You have Cersei seeing Tyrion for the first time in a long time, her mortal enemy. So the first time they lock eyes when she walks in, that's a moment. It's really awkward. It's like the, the I know family reunions 
for everyone are very awkward, but uh, the, let's just say the Lannisters uh, are a complicated bunch. She's held him responsible for the death of her mother and uh, the death of Joffrey and her father. You know, she can't really take responsibility or deal with her own grief. She has to just blame everybody else, and that's part of her pain too. Lena gives me a look that I never want to see ever again. It's, yeah, it, it almost flattened me. I wanted to hide. Met my brother. That was good. I had a standoff with him, which was great fun. That was great. Ignoring a very serious situation, the hound just goes straight to him and goes, basically, you and me, pal, we haven't finished. You're getting it. There's a non-verbal four or five second thing between Cersei, Jamie, and Brienne. That's not even a line of dialogue. It's just a little mini scene of built out of looks. It's sort of like one of the worst things that happens to you at school. I think it's Brienne's idea of absolute abject hell. Fighting the Hound wasn't abject hell, but a moment of having to deal with Jamie and Cersei is the most excruciating thing that could possibly happen to Brienne. She arrives with the mountain and Jamie and the, like you say, the, the King's Guard, and she's, you know, pretty fierce. And then she realizes that Danny isn't here, and that pisses her off, obviously. And then, of course, Danny arrives on Dragon. <laughs> you know, I take Fashion Be Late to brand new heights. She's very theatrical with her entrance, though. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of funny that you go, wow, she really has to show off her power, but fair enough. And she tries desperately to not be impressed by that arrival, and everyone else, obviously, as you would, is standing up in awe of this. And then, you know, in walks this young beauty of a queen, and she's immediately beyond frustrated on many levels. We've been here for some time. My apologies. And then all she gets from Danny is apologies, you know, and that then drives her in the scene. She can't bear it. We have something to show you. <laughs> well, for me, being a horror nerd, I was slightly giggly, so I was like, my very young zombie. She has never, ever seen anything like this before. And this is a creature that defies her. This is a creature she doesn't know how to disable. She doesn't know how to kill. This is something else. Daenerys has seen it, and she's aware of it, and it's frightening, but she is just watching Cersei. Like, she just needs to know that this has affected her. You know, she's always had that notion of creatures like this, that they don't exist, and it's nonsense. And so I think when he's there, she's she's back as a kid, just, you know, realizing everything her grandma, her nannies told her was real. She's staring into a face that she never thought existed. For Jamie, this is like definite proof that they have, that there is no choice. Clearly this thing, we have to deal with this in, and, and he believes them all. He believes his brother, but he also believes um, Daenerys and Jon Snow when, when they say that they saw 100,000 of these beings. That's where his head is. You know, the world could end in five minutes, but he is absolutely one-pointed focused on, I have never seen this before. This is amazing. I could really do things with this, you know. There's this beat in the scene that I really love because I have a line where, he, where he's like, he's just seen the White Walker, just died, and he realizes this is the first thing he's ever seen that terrifies him. And that's like a new emotion for him. You know, like, oh, that was, that was, that was an interesting feeling. I'm going back to my island. You should go back to yours. 
When winter's over, we'll be the only ones left alive. And then it all rests. Her dragon's death, everything, everything rests on Jon Snow just lying. The crown accepts your truce. In return, the king in the north will extend this truce. He will remain in the north where he belongs. He will not take up arms against the Lannisters. He will not choose sides. They, they've got a plan of action. Um, and then it all kind of falls apart with Jon's honor again. It's like, come on, dude. Like, oh, it's all you gotta do. Just this one time, just tell a fib, and he can't. He just can't. Like, that was the bad move. That was a bad choice, but thanks so much. I am true to my word. Or I try to be. That is why I cannot give you what you ask. I cannot serve two queens. Tyrion, knowing his sisters so well, knows that that's not going to go over well. Um, and of course, it doesn't. And it, when uh, John does that, the whole thing crumbles. So it's sort of like, I get it, but ah. Uh, then there is nothing left to discuss. It is so much fun with all of us all together. Having been isolated for so long and then suddenly, boom, I'm working with everybody. It was quite kind of event for me. It was, I loved it. It's lovely. It's all of us being together. So we're all kind of, you know. That was really exciting because we are all just a big happy family. And that extended to after work, unfortunately, because we had way too much fun. You know, usually you're like, like here, you're on set, and then you have one, a couple of other actors to hang out with. Suddenly we were like 15, 10, 15 at the same hotel. It was just a recipe for disaster. But it was fun, though. Having been so invested in the show for so long, for so many years, it's just so thrilling. And I was personally very excited to finally meet Daenerys. And I hope for the fans that they see a, a satisfying realization of what I think they've all been maybe waiting for, is for these worlds to be collided. Those 10 days were 10 of the most enjoyable days I've ever spent doing this show, because it's all these people having such an excellent time, just being in each other's company. I will never forget those days in, on that set. They were outstanding.